Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Jolene Morris, and in this video, I will show you how I make ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. The recipe I use is simply one serving of keto chow, but you can use any ice cream recipe you want. I've packed a great deal of information into this one video, but I've created chapters and a table of contents in the video description below. Feel free to jump around if there are only certain topics in this video in which you are interested. This slide lists the seven recipes I currently have in my keto dessert playlist. I generally don't make desserts because sweet food is a trigger for me. I can't stop eating sweets once I get started. However, I keep experimenting and trying to find a recipe that is a little sweet so I don't feel deprived, yet adds plenty of nutrition so I don't feel guilty. This video is for keto ice cream made in the Ninja Creamy Deluxe. For this video, I'll use keto chow to make my ice cream so I know that there will be plenty of nutrition. In fact, I can eat ice cream as a meal replacement so I don't feel guilty with this recipe. Let's talk about the Ninja Creamy machine. There are, or have been, five models of the Ninja Creamy. The 5-in-1, the NC300, was first released in July 2021. It held 16 ounces and is now very difficult to find. I have seen them at Walmart for $150 to $170. But the 5-in-1 model was followed up by the 7-in-1, which is identical to the 5-in-1, except that it comes with two additional functions. Its number is NC301, or in Canada, NC300CO. Just like the 5-in-1, it contains 16 ounces and sells for just a little bit more at $170 to $200 U.S. The machine that I have is the 11-in-1, or the NC501. It's also called the Deluxe. It was released in September of 2022, and it holds 24 ounces, or you can do half at 12 ounces. This machine costs $250, and it has many more options. In May of 2023, Ninja released the 7-in-1 Breeze or the NC201 model. It's not quite as noisy, and it's far easier to use. It retails for $200. In the fall of 2023, the 5-in-1 White Breeze was released, NC number 100. It's currently unavailable. There were many returns, and so I think they took it off the market to fix it. Ninja has announced that the Swirl will be coming out soon. I don't know anything about the Swirl, but I suspect it's similar to the 5-in-1 Breeze, only with a redesigned motor that works. All of these machines are 800-watt machines. None of the pint containers between the 7-in-1, the Deluxe, and the Breeze models are interchangeable. Well, which one do I recommend? If you don't already have a Ninja Creamy, it's well worth it to buy the Deluxe, especially if you make frozen drinks in larger sizes. But if you already have one of the other models, the price of the Deluxe and the additional features are not really worth upgrading. Let me share my advice about cleaning the Ninja Creamy Deluxe. Clean it immediately after use. All the removable parts are dishwasher safe, so I rinse them off after use and put them directly into the dishwasher. Be sure to disable the blade from the lid before putting it in the dishwasher. Wipe off the base unit, careful because it's mostly plastic, and be sure to wipe off that little spindle when you're cleaning the base unit. Occasionally, Disinfect the pint container with water and cleaning vinegar on the ice cream cycle, similar to how you clean a blender. Don't use any soap or the foam will get into the mechanism. And disinfect the lid, 
about every five to six uses. There are cleaning holes made especially for cleaning that lid. I use a water pick flosser to shoot water into the holes. Let me show you. Emulsifiers are used to help mix the fat and water in the ice cream. Stabilizers increase texture, reduce ice crystal size, make ice cream smoother, help it to melt slower and more evenly, and give it that creamy mouth feel. Stabilizers especially are needed when you have no sugar or lots of water ice creams. So both stabilizers and emulsifiers are important to add when you're making ice cream. These additives, stabilizers and emulsifiers, are given E numbers, which stands for European numbers. The E400s are the thickeners, stablers, and emulsifiers. We should note that the E400s that we add to our ice cream are natural products, nothing synthetic. Here is a list of some of the emulsifiers and stabilizers that you may use. Locust Bean Gum, E410, is excellent in reducing the ice crystals. If you're only going to use one of these stabilizers or emulsifiers, I would recommend Locust Bean Gum. Guar Gum, E412, is related to peanuts, so if you have a peanut allergy, don't use Guar Gum. It's okay with the ice crystals, but it helps more with the viscosity of the ice cream. Xanthan gum, E415, is good on its own, and it increases viscosity. It's just okay with the ice crystal size. If you're using keto chow, know that keto chow already has some xanthan gum in its mixture. Carrageenan, E407, Terragum, E417, gelatin, and pectin, and agar agar are also used. Agar agar, the E406, is the vegan alternative to gelatin. So out of all these stabilizers and emulsifiers, which one do I use? When I first made ice cream, I used only xanthan gum. But in order to decrease all those ice crystals, I made a mixture of five of them. I mixed locust bean, guar, xanthan, terra, and carrageenan gums. When my homemade mixture ran out, I bought a pre-mixed powder from Modernist Pantry. It's made especially for ice cream, and that's what I use now. It's the perfect blend. When I first made ice cream in the Ninja Creamy, there were a lot of ice crystals throughout the ice cream. I simply didn't like the texture when it felt more like I was eating a slushy than an ice cream. So I did a lot of research and a lot of experimenting. Until now, my ice cream has practically no ice crystals. There are still a tiny bit of ice crystals, so I'm still experimenting. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have found the magic bullet to eliminating all of them. Here is a list of the things that I currently do. Definitely use a stabilizer. As I explained on the previous slide, I use a mixture from Modernist Pantry called Perfect Ice Cream. I have a link for that ingredient in the video description below. Don't use very much or your ice cream will feel a little slimy. Limit yourself to no more than one-fourth teaspoon. You should compensate for a frost-free freezer. With the frost-free freezers that most of us have, the temperature goes up and down so the freezer doesn't accumulate frost. But that continually melts and refreezes the outside of the ice cream. That causes a lot of ice crystals. In order to compensate for that frost-free freezer, 
adjust your freezer's temperature if necessary. The ideal temperature for a freezer is zero degrees Fahrenheit. Try not to open and close the door too often. And cool down the ice cream in the fridge for an hour before freezing it, so it goes into the freezer already somewhat cold. And use cold pint containers. I usually put the pint containers in the freezer when I start preparing the ice cream mixture. Now this one's a little strange, but I have a small lunch cooler that has built-in ice packs. I store my pint containers inside this cooler, and then I put the cooler in the freezer. I think it helps to keep the freezer's temperature more constant, so you might consider using a cooler. Take the pint container of frozen ice cream out of the freezer about 20 to 30 minutes ahead of time and re-spin multiple times. I always re-spin at least twice, but depending on the recipe, I may re-spin up to five times. After the first cycle, scrape the sides of the pint container. Doing that removes the frozen crystals from the edge of the container. You'll see me do that in the demo of this video. And finally, add one tablespoon heavy cream before re-spinning it. The heavy cream helps melt just a bit. When the ice cream is too cold and it's powdery, you don't want to put water or milk in there or especially almond milk. Remember, almond milk is like 98% water. So add cream or butter or cream cheese or cottage cheese or something with some more fat in it. You'll see me use heavy cream in the demo later. Here are some tips I've learned after using the Ninja Creamy. You can refreeze leftover ice cream, but be sure to flatten the top and cover it before putting it back in the freezer. Freeze the pint container on a flat surface in your freezer. And freeze the mixture in actual containers. Some people on Facebook say they line the container with plastic bags so they can remove the block of frozen mixture and keep that in the freezer. Doing that allows them to reuse the pint containers so they don't have to buy as many containers. That may conserve on buying pint containers, but it would be easier for that block of frozen mixture to get ice crystals. Experiment with the included cookbook. All of the recipes could be modified to be keto-friendly. Join Ninja Creamy online groups so you can share tips and recipes. Consider freezing the container without the lid on it to eliminate that bulge. I've tried it both ways, and freezing it without the lid works fairly well for me, but I still get a small mound. Run the container under warm water right before processing. If the texture is crumbly and powdery, that means the mixture is still too cold. Let it sit out of the freezer 5 or 10 minutes longer before churning or do multiple re-spins. Here's a list of the tools and equipment I use to make ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. Of course, a Ninja Creamy. And I use a blender to mix up the keto chow to put in the containers. I use my packet freezer bag, which is optional, of course, but I think it really helps in the ice crystals. Use a spreader knife spatula to reach the bottom and the sides. This spreader was originally made to get nut butter or peanut butter out of a jar. It works perfectly for many uses. If you're going to be making berry smoothies, I use an OXO meat chopper to chop up the berries rather than putting them in a blender. I like the little chunks left over instead of it being just so smooth. And finally, I use a water pick portable water flosser. I know this sounds very strange, and it's something that probably nobody else does, but I use this to deep clean and sanitize my Ninja Creamy lid. I put water and cleaning vinegar in the water pick, and then spray it through the little cleaning holes. For more information about the tools, equipment, and ingredients I use in this recipe, refer to the video description below. Here are the recipe ingredients for keto ice cream that I make with keto chow in the Ninja Creamy. 
There are many keto ice cream recipes that don't require keto chow, but they don't have quite the nutrients that ice cream from keto chow does. As such, I'll opt for the keto chow ice cream. All keto ice cream recipes are processed just the same in the Ninja Creamy. These are the instructions for this Keto Chow Ninja Creamy ice cream. For the demo in this video, I won't show you how I mixed up my Keto Chow. I'll link to my video on how I mix up Keto Chow with cream in the description below. Let me show you how I make ice cream in my Ninja Creamy Deluxe. I'll use some Keto Chow that I mixed up yesterday along with some Perfect Ice Cream Stabilizer and it's been in the freezer overnight. I made the Keto Chow mixture yesterday with 1 4 teaspoon stabilizer and it's been in the freezer in a cooler overnight. I'll take the frozen pint container out of the freezer and set it on the counter for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes, I'll flatten the small bulge in the frozen mixture. Put the container in the outer bowl and line up the marks on the outer bowl in the lid and then turn to close the lid. Install the container by rotating it up to the right. Turn on the machine. Choose full pint container and choose light ice cream. I use this setting with ice cream containing a lot of water or milk. Push to start the churning. As you can see, it will take four minutes, which I will speed up on the video so you don't have to wait that long. The nice thing about the deluxe model is the timer clock. When it's done processing, push the button on the left of the machine to release the outer bowl. Take off the lid. The ice cream is a bit powdery at this point. Scrape the sides. I use a stainless steel spreader spatula that's made to scrape the last bit of peanut butter out of a jar. Now, I'll do a respin to further smooth the ice cream. A respin takes two minutes. I'll speed up the video again. Remove from the machine. Quickly do an additional scrape. Add a tablespoon of cream. And do another respin for two minutes.
Normally, it's done at this point. But I want to add some chocolate chips so you can see how the mix-in feature works. The flavor I've made here is apple pie, so chocolate chips don't really fit that flavor, but oh well. Make a hole through the middle of the ice cream. Drop in some chocolate chips. And then reattach the lid and put it into the machine. This time, instead of a respin, I'll press mix ins. Immediately rinse off the parts and put them in the dishwasher. Enjoy the smooth and ice crystal free ice cream. And there you have it. Dessert number seven, keto ice cream. The macros will vary a great deal depending on which flavor keto chow you use or what recipe you try. Thank you for joining me today for a demo on how I make my dessert number seven, ice cream in the Ninja Creamy. Next, you should watch this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and if appropriate, click the like button below this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.